are you thinking of marriage? Then allow me to introduce you to sickle cell genotype and marriage. It has become imperative for all impending marriage couples to get tested to know what their genotype is with respect to sickle cell disease. Now let's delve into the world of sickle cell genotype and how that can manifest into sickle cell disease. All right, first of all, let's look at the genes that codes for the various hemoglobins. If you look at the hemoglobin, there are three types of what? Normal hemoglobin, which are coded for by genes. We have the hemoglobin A1, which is the most common. That is the adult hemoglobin. This is the most common hemoglobin in the adult. We have hemoglobin A2, which is a variant of the A, which is not so common in the adult population. Then we have the HBF, which is the fetal hemoglobin, which is populous in fetuses, as well as young children, usually below the age of six months. So these are the genes that codes for the normal hemoglobin. So you have HbA1, HbA2, HbF. So HbF, HbA2, HbA1, they code for the normal hemoglobin. They are the normal hemoglobin genes, as you can see there. But in the adult population, HbA1 is dominant. In the babies, you have HbF, that is the fetal hemoglobin. And it's only after six months that HbF will be replaced by HbA1. Yes. All right, let's move ahead and look at the genes that codes for abnormal hemoglobin. So for abnormal hemoglobin, we have the HbS, which is a gene that codes for an abnormal hemoglobin. And for this particular HbS, when it codes the hemoglobin, it causes the hemoglobin to assume a C shape a C-shaped structure looking like an instrument used in the harvesting of rice we call the sickle. Because of that, the disease that will result from the accumulation of these abdominal genes, that's the HBS, we call it sickle cell, sickle cell disease because of the C-shaped hemoglobin. The hemoglobin will become C-shaped. That is why we call it what sickle. It looks like the sickle device used in the harvesting of rice. Then we also have the HB beta thalassemia. It's also a gene that codes for an abnormal hemoglobin. Then you have HBC, another gene coding for abnormal hemoglobin, HBD, HBE, HBO. Then the question will be, what is the hemoglobin? What is hemoglobin? When you look at the woman blood, it is made up of cells and water, which is known as plasma. And the cellular component is made up of the red blood cell, where we are going to focus, red blood cells. Then we also have the white blood cells. Then we have what we call the platelets. Now, our focus is where here, the red blood cell. The red blood cell, if you look at it very well, normally it is round. Uh, this round is like this. We we'll describe this as it having a biconvex. It's biconvex this shape. It's like a disc, which is biconvex. So it's round at the end, and it is like this to help it go through blood vessels of different calibers. And what is the function of the red blood cell? It contains hemoglobin that carries oxygen to every part of the body. So when you have the genes coding for abnormal hemoglobins in play, they will not give rise to a red blood cell having this shape. It will rather give rise to a red blood cell having this sickle shape in the form of C. And when you have a sickle shaped hemoglobin, what does that mean? It means that red blood cell becomes sticky and what? be clamping onto each other as well as the walls of the red blood cell and that would give rise to what a lot of problems now let's move on and talk about sickle cell disease so when we say sickle cell disease simply means that you are having two genes that will bring about an abnormal hemoglobin 
which will have the sickle shape as we are saying so when we say sickle cell disease it means that there is going to be two abnormal genes that would bring about the sickle hemoglobin now what are these abnormal genes so we can have the hbss will focus on the ending hbss hbsc because s s the abnormal hemoglobin genes sc2 abnormal hemoglobin genes sb thalassemia abnormal hemoglobin gene x d abnormal x e x o they are all abnormal hemoglobin genes so for sickle cell disease to occur you need two abnormal hemoglobin genes that's what we are saying that's why we have hbss sc s beta thalassemia s d s e s o so when you have all these we we'll say that that is what sickle cell disease but when we have two abnormal hemoglobin genes which are sx then we we'll refer to it as what sickle cell anemia sickle cell anemia and for sickle cell anemia it is the most severe form of sickle cell disease so you should know that sickle cell anemia is a type of sickle cell disease where the two abnormal hemoglobin genes are what ss because you also have other abnormal hemoglobin genes which are we have the beta thalassemia the c the d e o so for sickle cell disease to occur we are saying that there should be two abnormal hemoglobin genes of which one one has to be what s of which one has to be what s so if you watch very carefully you will see our combination there's always an x there's an x here there's an x here there's an x here there's an x here so there are two abnormal hemoglobin genes of which at least one has to be what s so if you watch there's s everywhere so if you have the two abnormal hemoglobin genes being s s then that becomes sickle cell anemia and it's the most severe form of sickle cell disease so sickle cell anemia is not equal to sickle cell disease sickle cell anemia is a type of sickle cell disease now someone will ask what if you have a combination of ax when we say as as we can see here a is a gene that calls for normal hemoglobin when we started we said there are three types of hemoglobin hba1 hba2 hbf so hba definitely they are normal they are normal hemoglobin genes okay so if you have a which is one normal then x which is abnormal then we cannot say that this is sickle cell disease because we said sickle cell disease there needs to be presence of two abnormal hemoglobin genes of which at least one has to be what x but here we have the x fulfilled but the other one is normal when you have that then we say that is what a sickle cell trait sickle cell trait sickle cell trait then someone will ask how do i know my sickle cell genotype for sickle cell genotype there are ways to know you have to go to the hospital for the test to be recommended we have two tests we have two tests that can be done we have what we call the sickling test then we also have what we call the hb electrophoresis hb electrophoresis so these are the two tests that can be done that is if you are already born right sickling test and what hb electrophoresis there is a difference between the two when your doctor recommends a sickling test for you you will not know your genotype all that we are saying here you will not be able to know it will just tell you whether you have sickle cell disease or not it will not even tell you whether you are a carrier it won't so the best to be done is hb electrophoresis and when your doctor recommends hb electrophoresis for you for this it will tell you that you have sickle cell disease and also tell you exactly the genotype and even if you don't have your career or what we call the sickle cell trait it will still tell you so that is how you are going to know about your sickle cell genotype all right then another question is how would i know about the sickle cell genotype of my unborn baby the answer to that is that there are tests that can be done antenatally so what are these tests we have what we call the chronic venous sampling and amniosynthesis 
these two tests can be done antenatally before your baby is born to determine whether they have sickle cell disease or not and what does each of these tests mean so for chorionic velo sampling a piece of the placenta will be taken and a genetic test will be performed to check the presence of sickle cell disease for the amniosynthesis the fluid that surrounds the baby inside the womb we call it amniotic fluid is taken and what tested genetically to determine the presence of sickle cell disease okay let's move ahead and look at a case scenario of a father and a mother who are expecting a newborn the father's genotype is AS and the mother's genotype is AS AS means they are sickle cell traits they are carriers they are no sickle cell disease so father having AS mother having AS so we want to look at the combination so to have the combination we need to segregate the genes and what are the genes here AS will be divided into A and S the mothers onto A and what X then we'll find the various combinations and to do that simply we are using the partner square and for the partner square we have the father here and the mother here the mother we have AS the father AS so look at the combination A A A S then we also have here A S what do you have here S S so at the end of the day what are the outcome the chances of the baby the unborn baby being healthy that is AA AA means you are healthy is 25 percent because there's only one out of four what is one out of four is 25 percent AS there are two here meaning that there's a 50 percent chance that if that baby is born and is tested or is tested before being given birth to its genotype will be what AS that is 50 percent chance that it will be AS then SS which is sickle cell anemia as we said initially SS is sickle cell anemia there's 25% chance that that unborn child will be sickle cell anemic will have sickle cell anemia which is the most severe form of sickle cell disease so the question is should these couple in the first place be married should they have gotten married the answer is no they shouldn't meaning that they should have checked their sickle cell genotype before getting married because in this scenario they have a 25 percent chance of giving birth to a child who will have sickle cell anemia and you're putting this child through a whole lot of stress a whole lot of pain a whole lot of pain which will be catastrophic so the answer is that they should not have gotten married in the first place they should have checked their sickle cell genotype before thinking of marriage then others will be asking what if i am aa and my partner is also aa should we get married someone will ask what if i'm aa and my partner is ss should we be getting married what if i am as and my partner is also as should we be getting married the answer to those questions are given in this table here so i'll be taking them one by one and explaining so we take a male who is AA that is normal normal does not have sickle cell disease it's not having a sickle cell trait then a female who is AS that is sickle cell trait can they get married the answer is yes they can what get married it's yes they can get married why because if you put this into the partner square you realize that there is no chance that they will give birth to a child with sickle cell anemia or sickle cell disease they will not give birth to a child with sickle cell disease they will give birth to a child who is having the chances of carrying the sickle cell trait but they will not give birth to a child with sickle cell disease so in that case they are safe to get married so if you are AA and your partner is AS you are safe to marry yes we should get married the next one is AA meaning normal and SS SS means you are, you are having sickle cell disease specifically sickle cell anemia should you get married yes the answer is yes because there is no chance that you will produce this again you will not produce a child who has sickle cell anemia or sickle cell disease there is no chance that you give birth to a child with sickle cell anemia or sickle cell disease 
So yes, you are safe to get married. If your partner is AA, meaning does not have sickle cell trait or sickle cell disease, and you are having sickle cell anemia, yes, you can get married. And this is the only chance that someone with sickle cell anemia or disease has when it comes to marriage. If he has having sickle cell disease, then your partner must be healthy, must have a normal HB genotype, must have a normal HB genotype, meaning that it should be AA. That's the only way you two shall be getting married. Partner with AA and the other with SC, should they be getting married? Yes, they can get married because there's no chance of you giving birth to a child having sickle cell disease. AA, this one, is a straight yes. This is the best. AA, that's the best option that you have. The next one is male having SS, female SS. It's a straight no. This is the worst form of it. If you are having sickle cell anemia or sickle cell disease, and your partner also has sickle cell disease, please break up. Do not continue with that dating. Stop dating. Stop dating and think better. Okay? But it's a no no. Don't try it, please. The next one is if you are having sickle cell anemia or sickle cell disease and your partner or has sickle cell trait, is it safe for you to get married? It's a straight no. Please stop. Stop already. Don't waste your money. Don't waste your time. Stop, stop, stop. Stop dating. Dating is not for you in this category. Look for somebody who has what? A general type of AA. That is normal. The next one is your partner has sickle cell anemia and you are having sickle cell disease, SC. Is it possible for you to get married? It's a straight no. Don't date. Don't date. Stop it already. Stop it already. SCSC, don't try it. SCAS, please don't try it. SCAA, yes, go ahead. You can get married. ASAS, sickle trait, sickle cell trait. Sickle cell trait, sickle cell trait. Please stop already. Don't waste the time. Time waits for no man. Time waits for no woman. Don't get married. It's not safe. So these are the combinations. The only combinations that is possible for, for you to get married is what I demonstrated here. A A A S. Yes, go ahead. A A S S. Go ahead. A A S C. Go ahead. A A A A. Go ahead. This actually is the best. A A A A. A A means normal, normal. And I also made mention that sickle cell again, sickle cell anemia is the most severe form of sickle cell disease. Another thing you have to know is that the HBS beta thalassemia which is a form of sickle cell disease, has two types. We have the HBS beta null thalassemia, then we have the HBS beta plus thalassemia. And of these two, the HBS beta null thalassemia yeah, is more severe than what the HBS beta plus thalassemia. Please take note of that. So, in a nutshell, if you and your partner's HB genotype does not match any of these four, Please, do not get married. Stop dating. Don't waste the time. Save money and save the life of your progeny. Don't waste the time. So what should you do before getting married? One of the most important things to do before getting married is checking your HB genotype. Am I a sickler? Am I having sickle cell disease? Am I having a sickle cell trait? or I am healthy. My genotype is AA. If your genotype is AA, it is normal. It is healthy. So please, always check your HB genotype before thinking of marriage. Or better still, know your HB genotype before thinking of marriage. Or even before thinking of starting what is known as dating. Save the time, save your money, and save the life of your unborn child. My name is Dr. Dell, and this is Concept in Medicine. Bye-bye.